Hey everyone, how's it going? So what am I working on now? Got a Chevy Trailblazer, and it came in just for an oil change, but like I said, whenever I get a car in, I'm going to look it over. I look over everything, and I do that, number one, for safety. I want to make sure that when you get your car back from me, you know what's wrong with it. I never try to upsell work, but I want you to know what's wrong with it, um, or stuff that's coming up that could be wrong with it. So I got the Trailblazer on the lift, and I did the oil change. So I started checking around, I shake the front end, I do all sorts of stuff just to make sure. And I came across something. Let me show you. Now here's the right side, this is the passenger side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake the wheel here so you can see this. Pay attention. See all that movement? Focus in on it a little better. Watch the lower control arm there. What that is, that's actually a mounting bracket for the control arm. And you can see the bushing's all blown out of it. See that? But that's one piece here that runs across. You have one on each side. I'm doing both sides because you're doing one, you may as well do the other because you have to do an alignment when you're done. This is the adjustment point for the suspension. They are available, and this is the piece. It's a pretty heavy cast iron piece that goes up in there, and these are the adjustment points that you can adjust the camber and caster that way. So since I gotta do one side, I'm doing both, because I guarantee you the bushing on the other side is not far behind. When this body style first came out, I remember GM had a recall like it was an emergency recall. It was a stop sale. If you sold them, uh, if you or if you had them on the lot, you can't sell them because these things were actually breaking and people were losing the lower control arm or you know the mounting points it would snap and the wheel would come out and you lose control of the vehicle. We had customers who were driving and OnStar called them and said, "Pull over now, stop your vehicle. We have a tow truck coming," and they would bring them a rental in the whole nine yards because it was that dangerous that you know, God forbid, you can kill somebody. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start changing this. Now the recall way back when doesn't apply to this. This is that's way too far away. But you don't have to worry about undoing anything in the suspension here. And you see the CV boots, but that's not of importance. These you basically just have the lower control arm mounting points here. I believe yeah, this, this is part of the lower frame here. But you have mounting bolts here, mounting bolts here. I think you have a set bolt somewhere here. I don't recall, you may have to take this rear piece out. I don't recall, it's been such a long time since I've done one of this, probably 20 years um, or 15 years, something along those lines. So let me start unbolting things. I'm gonna start by unbolting the lower control arms and let's see where it goes from there. So the front bolt came out reasonably easy. The rear bolt should come out reasonably easy. And luckily, they're not seized in the bushings. There, I remember something of difficulty with these, and I just don't recall what it is. Let's see. So there's the bolt there. Oh yeah, it's going to hit the steering rack. Was there something I had to do with the steering rack? I don't recall. I may have to loosen the steering rack and move it. Let me see if I can figure that out, or unless you unbolt these, and I think maybe if it comes out enough, well, let me try that. Let me let me unbolt everything here and see what happens. All right, I took the one front one out there. I think I took the one back one out too. So now, let's see, I don't pull. I think I got a pry bar in there. Let me get a pry bar in there and see what happens. All right. I saw that whole thing move. The whole thing's coming out relatively easy. What I think I'm going to do is cut the wheels a little bit. This way I get a little more boot angle too. It's a tight fit, but I mean, I could swear there was something else I had to do here, but I just don't remember what it was. All right. There we 
There it goes. Okay, it's out. It's just a matter of finagling it a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this thing as far in as possible now. Because what I want to do is I want to get the control arm off of there. So really all I'm doing is I'm pushing out on the wheel and tire just to try to get it out of the way. I may have to come up with something to hold the wheel and tire outward. That way it'll give me clearance in there. Let me figure something out. All right, so what I did was I pulled the wheel off and I ran a ratchet strap to the lift. Obviously, if you're doing this in your driveway, you run a ratchet strap to a tree or if you have another car next to you that you can hook it to the frame somehow. And what I did was because this thing is in, um, the key is in the uh, accessory position so the steering wheel won't lock, I blocked this wheel because otherwise, naturally, this thing's going to want to turn to the right because I have the pressure on that there. So that's pulled out and I think I got enough room. So what I'm going to try to do now is I'm going to try to pry that out. Let's see. Let me set you up like this. And maybe you can see what I'm doing. Do I need that? No. Basically, I'm getting it back inside the control arm. Let's see, can I get it out that way? Maybe, maybe not. Hmm. Not enough room there. The inside has to come back out. The inside of the back part here has to come back out a bit further. I may have to take this sway bar end link off. And I may have to undo the axle nut so the axle can slide in a little bit. All right, let me see. It's coming. It's almost there. I got the axle nut off and I got the sway bar end link off. So now let's see if this thing will come out even further. Actually, let me try to ratchet it more. Yeah, I mean, you see all the clearance I got now? So that's definitely helping. Still not enough. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, there it almost is. I should say. It's actually outside of that. So, quite a little bit of a bind, but not a big deal. See it? It's just hanging up there. So now I just got to get it out of there. Really shouldn't be too much of a hassle. Let's see. Let me get the bigger pry bar in there. I can this somehow. Okay. Always be careful so you don't pinch your fingers on anything. Years ago, I almost lost a thumb doing that. So, here we go. It's out. So, not a terrible job. Let me take this off here. And if you see that bushing is completely, completely boogered up. So, now the new ones, they are marked right and left. Hold on a second, let me put these sockets down. See, they're right. I mean, I, you could probably put them in the wrong way, but obviously you're not going to be able to catch the other bolt if you did, if you put them on the wrong side. So let's get this one in place. All right, so let's try to get this in place and not lose a digit in the process. So it's a little bit of a hassle. Yeah, actually, you know what? I'm gonna have to spread open where this thing inserts into the control arm because it's been squished like this. So let me get that spread out a little bit. It'll just make your life easier going back together. So I got those spread out. Basically what I was doing was taking a hammer and hitting these and you see how they're kind of like spread out now. 
still a very tight fit, but I did that. So hopefully this will make my life a little bit easier going in. You can also put a little bit of lube on there for when you're going back in, it'll help it slide. So I might do that too, but just put a touch of like, um, like the brake grease that I use. And uh, all right, let's do that and see how this goes together. All right, so this is just that regular um, braking caliper grease. So I'll put a little bit of that on each side where the bushing is going to go in. So like I said, it'll help everything slide together because it's still a very tight fit. I did try test fitting it already. This, this lube stuff really, it works very good for many different things. And it's a synthetic lube. Okay. You can buy them in much smaller tubes also. And they sell them at the parts store. All right, so let's see if we can get this thing in place. All right. So if you could see from there, I actually put a block. That's a four by four that I stuffed in there just to keep the control arm down. So now let's try getting that out without taking our fingers off in the process. Let's see. Can I do it? Okay. So now with that out, what I might want to do. See, if you're doing this on the ground, it might actually be a little bit easier because you'd be using a floor jack for this. Let me get a pole jack. Hold on a second. So what I have here is I have a pole jack, and I'm just going to tighten up on it to try to push the control arm up and in. So once it gets level, it should just pretty much pop in. finagling but it'll get there as you can see it is going in so now what we're probably going to do is release this ratchet strap that I have on this side actually there's almost no tension on it right now so I got something bound up a little bit It's just a control arm, actually. You don't want to go bananas hitting it either. Um, I, mean, I was just lightly tapping it. Let me see, it's not enough to get in there yet. Because there, there are holes in this thing. So you can when you do alignments there it goes there it goes okay so now it's a fact of just maneuvering it around to get it completely in place all right so let me finagle that thing around and let me get that completely in place all right so now with this thing getting closer i can actually get up through these holes and get in and maneuver everything around What I should have actually done is, I should have lubed these things up. I mean, they do move, but I should have lubed up the uh, slot there. All right, so now I should be able to start catching bolts. So now with that thing in place, you can catch the bolts. When I go to the other side, I am going to lube it up. I did wind up spring WD in there to try to help assist moving it around a little bit. And I believe, if I remember correctly from when I used to do these, once the weight of the vehicle is on the ground, you can actually move them a little bit easier because the weight of the vehicle helps spread this out when you loosen these bolts. Right now, I've got no weight on it. So let me get those in. Let me get the lower control arm bolts in place and we're going to go from there. 
Now with the suspension relaxed, I should be able to get this stuff in place to bolts. The lower control arms may be a, may be a little bit of a pain. Stick a pinch bar in there to try to line the holes up. You know, sometimes it can be a pain though. Let's go from the back side in. Sometimes if you can't catch one bolt, start catching the other bolt. Oh, that was the other trick too, was we would put the bolt in going in the opposite direction because of the steering rack. And let me actually, I don't know if I ever focused in on that before, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So, this bolt, to try to come out on this side, you have the boot for the steering rack to deal with. There's no reason the bolt can't go in this way. You have plenty of clearance between the boot and the head of the uh, bolt when it, once it's in place. Uh, you may have to slice the very tip of it off, I don't recall. We're going to find out in a minute, though. But that's what we used to do at the dealership because it makes your life that much easier. Uh, yeah, so now let's get the nuts on. And then we're going to finish this ins installation. All right, so now we're going to tighten these up. Now, when it goes to the alignment shop, they are going to uh, loosen these and retighten this thing once it's on the ground. But, oh, yeah, there is plenty of clearance between that boot. Let's just tighten up. These bolts here. All right. I just got to tighten up the sway bar end link, tighten up the axle nut, and basically do the other side. But as you see, that's relatively, it's, it's not a hard job. It's just, it's a little time consuming. It's a little tricky getting that in and out. Now, just so you can see it. See that? So there's plenty of room here between the end of the bolt and the boot for the steering rack. It's not going to interfere with anything. So, all right, I'm going to wrap this up, do the other side, and then we'll go for a quick road test over to the alignment shop. One thing I did a little bit different on this side is I took the pole jack and I stuck it underneath the end of the knuckle here, the spindle. It let the strut act as a pivot or like a seesaw. <clears throat> So I pushed it upward and it brought this end downward and now that gave me plenty of clearance. I don't know why I didn't think of that before, but anyway. So now what I'm going to do is I got to spread these out and I'm going to put the lube on the inside on this side too, just to make my life easier going back together. All right. Well, it looks like I'm actually not going to be driving this thing uh, over to the alignment shop because we have a truck over there that's not registered and uh, Mo is going to take this over there and pick up the other one. So I'm confident it's going to be fine. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you got something out of that. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.